Hi, everybody. I'm Matt Billman, CEO and co-founder of Netlify. And today I'm going to talk about uh, simplicity and state uh, and the dangers of uh, steering our communities towards complexity. So back in 2013, React launched as a view layer that brought simplicity to the to the process of building browser-based applications. Anyone that's tried to build a browser-based application before React have had to deal with this mix of state all over the DOM. You would have bindings listening to DOM elements. You would have DOM elements that contain state. You would have Ajax listeners that would fetch requests and update DOM elements. And, that you, and as you build out more complex applications, reasoning about what state your DOM was in and what state your application went in and what a user would experience became increasingly hard. React launched this idea of turning the whole UI into a function of your state. And it really made it so much easier to reason about what we were, what experiences our users were having based on any given state. You could take a state, feed it to a tree of DOM of React components, and you would know for any given state what the user would see. React fundamentally made it easy to reason about the state of your application. And that was one of the superpowers that, that, that made React pop, uh, powerful and adopted. Of course, as we want React to solve harder and harder problems for us and solve more of the problems of building applications, we're introducing a lot of new concepts like context or hooks or the new proposed server components or streaming. And as we go along this way, of course, it's important to be curious and excited and explore where we can go. But it's also important that we try to keep keeping ourselves honest do we still know what is the current state of our application? And do we know at any given time, what will a user experience for a given state? This was like the initial superpower that gave React a feeling of simplicity and that make, made applications easy to reason about. So as we evolve React as a more complete framework, how do we keep that quality? Now. Five years ago in San Francisco, I gave a, a, a talk at Smashing Conference where I introduced the concept of the Jamstack for the first time as an architecture. And the idea back then was very similar. I had seen how uh, over time web development had made it harder and harder to reason about the state of your web property. We had started out from a world where a browser would fetch files from a server to a world where we would run a program to a world where that program would always talk to a database for every request uh, and to a world where to scale that architecture, we started introducing different layers of caching between servers and databases as uh, the web grew global and we needed to reach users all over the world. We introduced CDNs for assets or uh, images or JavaScript files. And uh, to understand our system as developers, we had to be able to reason about all of these different layers of the stack. The Jamstack was really an architectural approach to say, how can we make it easy to reason about the state of your web property? How can we go towards an architectural approach to building for the web, where instead of this complex request response cycle flowing through all these different layers of caching, we take code and we take your content, your APIs or your data, we run a build and we deploy immutable assets to an edge network. Um, and as we do that, we start introducing this idea of atomic deploys, where you always know you have a you, you have a state, you've deployed, it's live. You know exactly what documents and HTML pages has been built as part of that. And when you change to a new deploy, it's an atomic operation where everything goes live at the same time and where you always know if a user visits a URL, what are they going to see? Now, in a similar way as with React, as we want the Jamstack architecture to solve more and more complex problems for us and build more and more applications in the gray zone of all that kinds of different use cases, we're also starting to see 
more and more complex uh, concepts introduced into the stack, rehydration, dynamic SSR for some pages, tiered CDN caching, approaches like incremental static regeneration and stale while revalidate HTTP headers. And in the same way as with React, as we build this future, we have to really ask ourselves, do you know what is currently deployed at any stage? And do you know what a user will experience if they vis visit a given URL? Do you know exactly what happens if you roll back to an earlier deploy? And do you know what happens if you push a deploy preview number 110 to the main branch right now? Now, of course, one of the reasons that we are exploring a lot of these new concepts like incremental static regeneration and stale while validate is because we're trying to build increasingly large projects with a Jamstack approach, especially large e-commerce projects with hundreds of thousands or even million of catalog pages have proven challenging. Build time starts to get longer. We have some existing approaches within the current Jamstack architecture that sometimes work as a solution to this. Sharding your build into many different uh, sites is one approach, but it doesn't always work. Sometimes your content just doesn't lend itself well to sharding. Progressive web apps are single page applications where we deploy an app shell into the browser and then use the JavaScript bundle to talk to APIs is often a really powerful concept and, and my preferred recommendation for anything that's a locked in experience. But we know that there's a cost of rendering from JavaScript in the browser on low end devices and API caching at the edge is far from a solved problem. Stale while validate has been another approach, but one that I, I'm personally skeptical about. It serves stale content to users, and then in the background, fetches an, a new version, regenerates, and puts that into the cache. Um, but again, the problem with serving stale content to users is that now you no longer have a clear answer as a developer to what will happen when a user visits any given URL. At Netlify, we've been thinking a lot about how can we approach these problems from a Jamstack architectural perspective, give the same easy to reason about simplicity to developers, but solve these problems. And we've talked about an approach called distributed persistent rendering, where we take just the critical pages and run those at build time. And then we build the rest of the pages on demand, but persist them and give the same guarantees around atomic deploys and a, a, a predictable state as you would get from a build. This is something that we are turning into a community RFC and we would love the help from this community to evolve and test. We've been working with prototypes of this approach in Noxt, 11T and Next.js and you can learn much more about it on our blog right now. So please, participate in evolving the Jamstack in a way that stays true to the roots of simplicity and guarantees that as developers, we don't give up the ability to reason about the state of our web property. Thank you so much.